Hey, family and friends, welcome out to another Impact Relationship Academy. Now, remember, this is going to be the last one for a season. We'll let you know when the next ones are coming back up. Now, when you are seeing this, watching this, and connected with us, I got to say something. It's right now our anniversary. It's 20 years, baby. We're celebrating July 28th. Come on, hands up. Yes, love you. Thank you so much for saying I do. Uh, you have made me tremendously and exceptionally the happiest man on this planet. So love you, honey. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. I love you, too. Yes, indeed. And, and matter of fact, so obviously we recorded this, you know, before our anniversary, because right now we're kind of laying out on the beach in Hawaii somewhere, really soaking some things up because God is good. And we just decided we wanted to celebrate these 20 years uh, the right way. Praise God. So it's a trip we've always wanted to take. So uh, we're just thankful to God uh, that we are able to do it. With, you know this time in this season but we got some good stuff for you still to delve into as we wrap up these motivational gifts so we can better understand ourselves each other we can work better together and we can accomplish more for the kingdom of almighty god so honey come on pray let's let's go father we thank you so much once again for another opportunity to learn of you and we just open our hearts, Father, to receive the download of instruction concerning our motivational gifts today, Father. We say help us to see ourselves more clearly. Help us to see our loved ones more clearly, Lord God. Help us to understand how we can relate to each other more effectively, more efficiently, Lord God, in a way that pleases you more so that we can accomplish your vision and your plan for our lives. And we just give you glory, honor, and praise for what you're about to do. We say, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's important to remember, the reason why we're covering this is not just simply for self-awareness and not just simply to, to eliminate chaos in the relationships in your life. The ultimate reason behind this is to make sure that we are better for God and accomplishing his vision in the earth. You know, our heart and our why here at Impact Church is that we exist to equip all people to grow fully in Christ. And that happens through relationship. So the better we can conduct the relationships, the better and more successful we can be for Almighty God. All right, so let's go, go into it. What we got here, well, let's read our key scripture first. Our key scripture is found in Romans 12, mm -hmm. verses four through eight. Yes. And here we go. It says, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God is giving you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you, and that's our perceivers. Yeah. If your gift is serving, others serve them well that's our servers mm -hmm. if you're a teacher teach well that's our teachers if your gift is to encourage others be encouraging mm -hmm. that's our encouragers we love the encouragers mm -hmm. if it is giving give generously that's our givers if god has given you leadership ability or administrators take the responsibility seriously and if you have a gift for showing kindness or compassion to others do it gladly mm -hmm. Good, good. And so today we're going to start off with looking at the administrator. So, of course, the administrator is the portion in Romans 12, 8, where it talks about having leadership ability. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. Mm -hmm. So that is the responsibility. That is the gift that we call administrator. And to administrate the Greek word that it's taken from, it means to stand before, to preside, to organize, to facilitate. So the administrator is the person who has a unique gifting from God. So this is beyond something that someone learned to do, beyond education. This is just something that motivates and drives the administrator. They have this unique gifting from God to develop systems and organize projects develop systems and organize projects so now let's look at whether they see in black and white or shades of gray well the administrator sees majorly in black and white but they do have the ability to see in small shades of gray but most of the time they're a black and white person and what black and white simply means they don't see um, nuances to something being right or wrong is either right or it's wrong. There's nothing in between. 
and the administrator also when it comes to being a people person or a non-people person they are not very people oriented the administrator is someone that's more project oriented than people oriented so they, their their affinity is more so for getting things done than it is for for drawing energy from being around people or being with people all right here's another moment of transparency um, share with you all when we first started these there's two that I identify with uh, one is perceiver and the other is this right here as an administrator and for me it was a bit of a struggle because as what my wife was sharing an administrator is not you know very much people oriented and that's the way that I am I'm I'm fine just sitting at home you know by myself you know watching a game or reading a book or whatever the case you know may be I'm fine I, I'm, I'm good I get my energy from getting things done. When, when, when things are being accomplished, I mean, my, you know, er, everything is heightened on the inside of me. That's really where I get my energy from. So I remember, you know, having conversations with God. It was like, God, you're calling me to be a pastor, but, you know, people are not my thing. Can, can we just talk? I mean, I love people, always have loved people, but, but I gain energy not from people, but from, you know, getting things done. So sometimes I can see individuals wanting me to be like, you know, come on, be more people oriented and get energy, you know, just from being with us. And that's good. But if, if we're not accomplishing anything, then I'm deflated. I'm, I'm just completely done because I'm wired in such a way that we want to accomplish what God has accomplished. If we're not accomplishing what God has, has called us to accomplish, then for, for me, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm completely, you know, zapped of energy. You know, hey, I'll just stay at home and stay in the bed. We ain't doing nothing. Look, let, let's just stay at home and stay in the bed then. It doesn't make any sense. So this is, you know, the, we are a hard part and a big part of how I'm wired. And yes, I see in black, you know, black and white. But I have the ability to see, you know, in gray, you know, as well. So I really, really identify with this particular gift here and the things that we're going to share with you on this. So what's some of the characteristics of the administrator? Honey? Well, one character <laughs> characteristic is that the administrator, um, as we were talking about just the different, the analogy of the part, body parts. And we talked about the teacher being the head, the perceiver is the eyes of the body, the exhorter is the mouth of the body, the mm -hmm. giver are the arms of the body, the server is the hands of the body. Well, the administrator is the neck of the body. They make everything happen. They, they turn that head the way that they need it to go so that things take place. And they thrive when they are tasked with turning chaos into calm. Mm, yeah, come on. Now, the perceiver in chaos, they're like, okay, I, I can't deal with this. They, they looking at all the people that's wrong that caused the chaos <laughs> in the first place. Yeah. The teacher is in there trying to correct everybody and tell them, teach them, how, you know, what, what are the seven steps yeah. of chaos creation. Where did the training go wrong? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. The compassion is in the corner crying somewhere like, I just want everybody to get along. Mm -hmm. the but the, <laughs> the server just jumps in and be like, well, I'm just going to do something then. Yeah, let, let me just put my hands yeah. to something. Mm -hmm. Let me just, the giver is trying to throw money at it like, okay, uh, can I just write a check and, and y'all y'all be all right? Mm -hmm. But the administrator is energized because they see an opportunity to turn something that's chaotic into something calm. Yeah. They are thriving in that type of situation. I, I found, and I, I learned this about myself years and, and years ago. Um, I thrive on game day. Some some people practice well, and and, and practice is good. But when we got an event, we got something that's showing up. Watch this Sunday morning, you know, for Impact Church or some event that we're doing. It's it's in those moments. It's it's, it's like my spider senses are at their highest. I mean, I can see things. I can lock in on things. You know, I, I see exactly how we can get this done. While other people are kind of like panicking, like, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? For for me, it's it's like slow motion. Like, okay, this is what we need to get done. And so I identified that with myself. You know, year, years ago, didn't understand that it was really kind of a characteristic of an administrator that if you drop me into chaos and you give me liberty I'll, I'll turn that thing around I'll, I'll smooth that thing out I'll bring some order and some peace to it notice what I said if you give me liberty now it, sometimes you know people will resist and then there's nothing that you can do but if you give an administrator liberty they will bring some order and peace out of chaos mm -hmm. and that goes perfectly with the next uh, quality of the administrator is that they prefer delegated authority, but they will take charge 
if no one else is taking charge. Mm -hmm. So if they walk into a chaotic situation and there's no one that's taking charge, they're not just going to sit there and allow the chaos to continue. They're going to find a way to, to, to be interjected into that situation so that they can bring they can bring some order, they can bring system to the chaos. They have a disdain for poorly run system so you know they they're, they're not gonna they're not going to just kind of sit around and they work best in a situation where they are the visionary because they they have the, they they're able to implement their system from the very beginning they can say okay this is what we want to do and this is how we're going to do it mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's good one one thing you got to keep in mind when when an administrator is in charge they can sometimes be viewed as a as a task master ma master and just get it done at all costs, you know, type person. It's, again, it's not that they're a bad person, not that they, you know, are, are not considerate of other people, not that they don't love you. Again, the administrator is just fueled by accomplishing what is set before them. And so just keep that in mind, you know, uh, we need administrators and then we need to make sure administrators stay well balanced, praise God, and just learn how to relate well to them because as we all flow together, we accomplish much more for Almighty God. I'm talking just like an administrator right there, praise God. Amen. What, what you got there? And so a biblical example of an administrator would be Nehemiah. Yeah in the Bible. So Nehemiah was one who took charge of this chaotic situation because the nation of Israel the, it was decimated. Um, they, they had been overrun and um, taken over by other nations. And so everything was just decimated. And he actually went back to their homeland to kind of rebuild and, and, and start this rebuilding process. And so it was deeply troubling to him to see that their people were, were struggling and, and there's this chaos back in, in his homeland um, because there was nobody, nobody leading, nobody doing anything to bring things back to order. And so Nehemiah it goes back you can read in um, Nehemiah chapter 1 Nehemiah chapter 2 really really the whole book of Nehemiah it talks about his efforts to really bring order where there was a lot of chaos and where there was no leader there he became the leader and he actually brought order out of chaos that's good. You know, another example, obviously the Lord Jesus, he exemplifies all of these motivational gifts at the highest level. Remember, we, we looked at this you know, a couple of weeks ago in our last session in Mark chapter six, where Jesus now is feeding, you know, the, the thousands with five loaves and two, uh, two fish. Remember in the context of things, they're asking him like, look, if, if we had, you know, a uh, uh, hundred, you know, you know, dollars worth of stuff, could we buy enough food to be able to feed, you know, these people, the disciples couldn't see it. So, so Jesus not only had, you know, the what, that yes, this can be done, but then once, you know, he was able to multiply these five loaves and two fish, he set some order to things. He says, now have everybody sit down, put, put them in the groups, and then this is how we're going to distribute, you know, this goodness. That, this is Jesus now functioning as an administrator to bring some peace and order in a chaotic situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. What you got there, and so another quality of the administrators is that they enjoy working on long range goals or projects. So they love to plan, they love to forecast, they love to look into the future and, and cast vision yeah. about this is where we're going and this is what we're doing. You know, servers and exhorters are more so short-term goal people. So they, they like to see things done today. They look, okay, what can we accomplish right now? What, what's the short-term thing? That's what I want to put my hands to. But the administrator is the one who likes to see long-term. They see, they see years ahead and they want want to plan to see things um, happen the way that they have it in their heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's good. And see, again, this is something that I identify, you know, strongly with, you know, looking at things, you know, now, you know, three, four, five, ten years down the road of how we can be in position for this and position for that. You know, uh, one one of uh, my, my staff ministers, you know, he, he's an administrator. And so I really tasked him. I said, look, I, I need for you to start thinking, you know, even more like I'm thinking, start thinking three to four or five years down the road. What what things do we need to do? What things do we need to put in place now so that we can be able to accomplish? what God has called us to accomplish. That's what a administrator does. Now, the downside to that is we can wind up thinking so far into the future that we ruin the mood for now. 
And so everybody's just kind of discouraged, like, well, yeah, all right, we hear, we hear the vision, we hear the vision, but what about now? And so, so there, there is a balance that has to be there, but don't be frustrated, you know, with your administrator. And, and for those of you that I'm your pastor, don't be frustrated with me that I'm thinking years down the road and how we can get in better position. Some things we could do right now. Some things we could just pull money out of the bank and just go ahead and do right now. I know some people were frustrated with us being in a movie theater. I see it as an absolute blessing praise God thank God for it it's just like let's just do something well no we're not just gonna do something hastily come on we got a vision yeah it, it may take a minute it may take a little bit of time but it's gonna be very rewarding not only for you and your family but for the community praise God for people and so that the Lord Jesus Christ can be glorified mm -hmm. amen and the administrator administrator also loves supervising and delegating they are great delegators so that that's something to keep in mind when you're thinking of an administrator mm -hmm. and so now let's look at the weaknesses of the administrator the weakness is that because the administrator is so vision oriented goal oriented they can drive themselves and others to the brink and neglect personal needs mm -hmm. So they love projects, they love to multitask, they're 100% committed, and because of that, they can, um, because they're drawing energy from the project, sometimes the people can tend to feel like, okay, what about us? Do you care about us too? And so they need people in their lives who can help them to take a break. They need people in their lives who can help them try to prioritize. And they always need to remember that people are more important than the project. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, one thing with this that, again, I, I really identified with myself is that the energy doesn't come unless the project is challenging. So if you just kind of put something out there for an administrator that quite frankly, anybody can do, the administrator is really not going to get energized, you know, behind it. And, and I, I learned this even from myself, you know, from some years back. Um, and even earlier this year, you know, I started back to finish my Master's of Divinity uh, degree. And uh, my first class I took, we had a 25 page paper that, that we needed to submit. And I hadn't done a 25 page paper in a number of years. So uh, immediately now I'm energized in that and really want to take steps to be able to work things out so able to get that done so forth boom did well on it the next class i had we i had like a 12 page paper now 12 and 25 come on now i mean it's it's that's less than half so watch this initially i'm not even really that energized i'm like okay i got a little bit of paper now because i'm just done a 25 so now all of a sudden it's a 12 just like i'm not energized and now here's the downside if i don't watch it I'll wait until the last minute until now the pressure starts to rise up and then I get energized because now even though it was a smaller project now now the time is shorter so now I feel like okay I, I got to do it and that's that's one thing that you got to be sure to balance out and, and not allow that sense of just being energized in a project to dominate things mm -hmm. yeah. mm, that's good mm. also the administrator wants to make sure that they don't view people as just resources help that that are there to accomplish a task mm -hmm. um so they they want to see um instead of seeing people as liabilities they need to see people as assets yeah, yeah. um so they so you know if you see people just as a resource then if they're not at the, the top of their game, then the administrator can fall into kind of um, showing favoritism to those who are at the top of their game and kind of neglect those who may not be as productive. But the administrator has to always remember that people are assets and they can be developed to be um, to grow and be greater in their productivity so everyone should be seen on the same level and our mission is people is people over projects absolutely so we cannot be so mission-minded that we forget to value God's most precious mission and that's always people praise God so this is it's a thing that I have to constantly remind myself to to always value the wonderful awesome you know people you know that we have we got a dynamic team here at Impact Church of South Florida I'm talking about of directors of coordinators coaches captains playmakers and one of the things just as you know the pastors we always want to just be sure is this that listen you know, we don't want people to think like it's all about the task or the project or the service. No, it's all about you. 
It's all about it's, it's all about you. It's all about the people in our community. That's what is most important. Praise God. You mentioned something though about you know another weakness and challenge for a um, administrator is this issue of favoritism. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. mm -hmm. What you got there, man? Well, they can be from, prone to showing favoritism okay. because they're mission minded and they gravitate to to those who are helping them to best accomplish the mission. And so they always have to remember um, that, you know, I love what um, John, John Maxwell says. He says, to treat everybody like they have a 10 on their forehead. Yeah. So everybody, you know, whether or not their productivity is at the, the high level of somebody else's, um, instead of showing favoritism, we are to extend ourselves really as leaders to develop everybody that God sends to us. And so coming to a place where um, it's not so much looking at how someone can help the outcome, but how can I help someone be who God created them to be? Yeah, that's good. That's good. And then what other weaknesses we got there? Well, sometimes they can overlook serious faults if it helps them to accomplish the mission. So that's something to look out for. Uh -oh. And sometimes they can seem bossy. Huh? So like the exhorters, sometimes they they can so. seem bossy and become callous to criticism. And we all need to um, listen to constructive criticism mm -hmm. and, and, you know, really search um, the spirit of God to see if there's something he wants us to change. So we all want. So as administrators, we want to look look out for those things. That's good. Here's the life scripture. So if you are an administrator or if you know someone that's an administrator, share this verse with them. Luke chapter six, verse 31. We'll read it to you out of the message translation says, here is a simple rule of thumb for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you. Then grab the initiative and do it for them. Praise God. So again, keeping people you know, at the forefront of your thinking. Yes, as an administrator, you know, accomplishing the task, accomplishing the vision is critical, it's important, but never at the expense of people. So keep mm -hmm. that in mind always. All right, babe, we got one more motivational gift. We have not forgotten about you. If you are that kindness, that compassion, that mercy person, come on now, we want to talk to you right now. So lean on in. Come on, mm -hmm. babe, what you got? So let's look at the <clears throat> compassion motivational gift. Yeah, yeah. Romans 12, 8. It says, if you have a gift for showing kindness or compassion to others, do it gladly. Yeah. And so that word compassion, it comes from a Greek word that means to have compassion by word or deed, specifically to obtain, receive, or show mercy by divine grace. Yeah. So this is more than someone who's just nice to each other, nice to other people. We all should be nice to people. We all should operate in the love of God. Can with everyone other people. say amen? No matter what yes, motivational gift we are, we all need to walk in love with each other. But the compassion motivational gift is someone who has a divine gift from God to extend mercy and compassion in the lives of the other. I mean, for them, you know, the motivation of this compassion gift is to mentally and emotionally relate to the feelings of those around them. So this is the feeling person. This is the, the person who, who just has a heart to just feel what you're feeling and comfort you when it seems like you're down and rejoice with you when you're happy. So just like the server focuses on the physical needs, the practical needs of people, this person with the passion gift, compassion gift, concentrates on giving empathy, comfort during distress. I mean, this person, they are the heart of the body. They are that heartbeat. They feel what you feel and they're with you when in the good times or with you in the bad times. They are just that heart person. We, we have some compassion gifts, you know, just within our, our leadership, you know, team here at uh, Impact. Uh, two that I'll, I'll share with you. And the moment I say it, you'll be like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Laura Lynn Mosley, for those of you who know her, and Gwen McDuffie, that, that, that's another one. If, if something is not right, somebody's hurting, it, it, it does not matter. They got to get there. They, they got to get there. They, they, they want to emphasize, empathize with them. They, they want to bring comfort. They want to bring a sense of peace and, and relief. I mean, it's just their heart. I mean, I absolutely, you know, love it. But the thing you have to watch out, if you are a perceiver or a teacher or an administrator, well, see, you don't view things the same way. See, that perceiver is kind of looking at things. Someone is hurt and just like, okay, what did they do? 
What, what, what did they do? They, they, they didn't listen. They see they didn't listen, so they got what they deserve. See, that, that's not the compassion. The compassion person is like, no, 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 wait, we got to help them. We got to help them. You know, the giver is like, I ain't throwing no more money at that. You know, no, no. <laughs> we got to slow down. And, and this is why we need, watch this, this is why we need each other so we can mm -hmm. balance each other. Because just by ourselves as an administrator or a teacher or a perceiver, we're going to wind up exaggerating things, you know, too far away on one side so we need this balance so we need you compassion kindness givers you know we need you out there praise god what, what you got there so this compassion motivational mm -hmm. gift they are definitely a people person oh, they yeah. love people they love they grant they gain energy from people they attach to people easily they make friends easily that is the compassion gift and they see things in deep shades of gray deep this is not a black and white type of person the, the perceiver and the compassion person are polar opposites polar opposites okay and so they see things in deep deep shades of gray so let's look at some characteristics of this compassion gift well number one is they empathize with hurting people every compassion gift if if, if you're someone and you thought you were a compassion gift but when you see somebody hurting, like what Pastor said, you start thinking about what they may have done wrong to cause the pain, you are not a compassion gift. A compassion gift empathize with people and people in distress are drawn to them. They're, they're prone to bringing back, you know, the stray animals as kids, you know. They found the stray cat, they found that the animals laying around with the broken leg or the broken wing and they want to take care of it. They find broken people and want to help the broken people that they find. Want to take them home too? Right, right. That's what, that's what they are driven by. That's what motivates them, nursing things that are hurting back to life. Yeah, yeah. They are naturally a peacemaker and generally non-judgmental. So they go out of their way to mend fences. They don't like being in a strife type environment. They avoid strife at all costs. They avoid conflicts at all costs. And they see, like the exhorter, they tend to see the best in people. They, they tend to overlook the bad and only see the good. That, that's, that's where they're coming from. Yeah, and that's a balance point that you, you have to you know, give attention to. Here's another one, that compassion are very thoughtful and they need to be close to those that they love. So for, for those who is compassionate, they, they, they don't do long distance relationships well. They, they want to be up close. They want to be, you know, intimate. They want to be connected, you know, well with you. So they need to be in the same, you know, vicinity so that they can be able to express, you know, their love. And, and, and the moment you have some kind of challenging time, they can be able to be there. That is a compassion gift. Then uh, the number four is they make decisions from the heart and not the head. Now, that's again, you got to balance that because that, that's not always the wise thing to do. We want to make decisions really from God's heart, from his word. But compassion, just the way you're wired, that you know, you're not thinking about it. You just see hurt and you want to make sure that you get there to bring some relief. And, and that's wonderful, but you got to be sure to balance that out. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Also, they are trusting and trustworthy. Mm -hmm. So a compassionate person, sometimes being a little bit too trusting might get them in trouble, but they're also trustworthy. This is someone that you you can you know take it to the bank. If you ask them to do something, if they're going to be, in, if they say they're going to be in your corner, they will react harshly to someone doing something bad to someone they love. They are very trustworthy and they and for those who they feel are in their circle, they will do whatever it takes to protect them. Oh, that's good. Let's look at some weaknesses. You know where the compassion is concerned again every motivational gift you know has it and it's just areas that we have to develop and mature in mm -hmm. the, the first one is this is that a compassion you know person can tend to be sometimes indecisive because you you just never want to do something that might hurt you know someone else and compassion uh 
motivational gifts are typically kind of short range thinkers. You know, we talked about administrators are more long term. Well, compassion are more short term. They're dealing with the immediate needs, praise God. So they, again, they don't want to hurt others' feelings or cause any sense of a conflict. So as a result, someone who has a compassion gift can be prone to procrastination, kind of waiting till the last minute to kind of do this because they're they're just they're hesitant on making the decision and that's one you just definitely want to train yourself to make decisions of quality and then keep friends around you who can help you with that as well it's a, that's really what you need because the way you're wired is going to be difficult but if you have a group around you some some real genuine friends around you they can help to balance that out for you mm -hmm. Another weakness is that compassion give can be easily offended because uh -oh. their, their, their heart is on their sleeve um, and they give so much of their heart to others and it's just out there. It can sometimes cause that offense to come to pass um, and they can become offended when people don't respond to them with the same compassion that they respond to others and you know what all gifts te technically all gifts are like this when someone doesn't operate with the thinking that we have based on our gift we can all tend to have you know a little bit of offense that will try to pop up but this compassion gift when someone doesn't treat them the way that they that they treat others then they're like okay what what's what's up here they can tend to be offended and sometimes nobody else will know that they're offended they'll just keep it in they'll put a smile on their face though because they don't really like conflict so they'll continue in the relationship they'll continue interacting and nobody will know that they're offended and they really need a safe place to be able to share their heart because they're always providing a safe place for other people to share their heart so they need people in their lives who you know are safe spaces that they can share things with and reveal what they're thinking and what's offended them so that they can get some some godly counsel concerning different things that they're dealing with yeah that's good here's another one that, to keep in mind you know for compassion an area that you got to make sure you put a safeguard on is that sometimes there can be a low calibration for detecting immorality and, and what I mean by that is because your heart wants to help you know so 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 passionately that you can wind up getting drawn into sin just simply trying to help someone because everyone doesn't have you know great intentions so they they will draw you into something without you even knowing it you're thinking you're just helping them you, you're thinking you're coming to their rescue and before you know it you've kind of added to a, a sinful you know behavior and activity that maybe you know they are involved in so so you, you want to be you know careful you, you want to have a a real high you know calibration you know for for metal like like going you know through um you know a metal detector you know at the airport come on now you go through that thing you got something metal on you you know after they told you to strip down already if you still got something on you it's going to pick it up and that's that's the kind of you know detector that you need to have you know versus you know some of these others that you can go in other places and you can walk in there with you know all, all kind of you know metal you know things and it never even goes off because you can adjust the calibration so you just want to make sure you bring that calibration up so that you don't allow your heart then to help someone lead you into something that can really hurt you and you know what something else we want to uh, you know just understand about um, this compassion gift mm -hmm. is that where the perceiver makes this decisions from the head not the heart mm -hmm. we talked about the fact that the compassion gift makes decisions from the heart not the head mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that that's balanced, as you were saying earlier, um, because we have to make decisions that are decisions of quality. And so sometimes it's good to make decisions from the heart, but it's always good to make decisions that are led by God. So we always want to be led by him in every decisions that we, we make. And then we also want to look at with a compassion gift that um, sometimes they are taken advantage of because of their kindness. So people know that, oh, you know what, they're, they're gullible. They'll just do whatever, you know. All I have to do is give a, a you know, a sad story and they'll, they'll be there. They'll, they'll, they'll write the check or they'll, they'll give me the ride or they'll let me stay with them for a couple months. And so compassion gifts have to be 
you know, cautious that they are led by the Spirit of God and they're not just being led by their heart in different things because that can open the door for the enemy to use people to take advantage of them. So that's why it's very important for them to have, you know, this, this connection with God and being led by the things that he is leading them into and in, 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 in every decision. Yeah, very good. You know, a key passage that you never want to forget, you know, in terms of compassion is the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, verse 30 through 37. You know, when this man is robbed and beaten, you know, on the side of the road, left to die, a priest comes by, religious figure, but he goes to the other side. A Levite comes by, you know, and, and a, an assistant, you know, there in the temple, a religious figure, he goes to the other side. But then here comes someone who, from a racial standpoint, there's a rift, there's contention, you know, there's division, but he sees, just simply sees a hurting man. And he does everything he can to make sure that this person is rescued, that this person is healed, puts him into a hotel, pays you know, for his time there, goes back and checks on him. This is a perfect stranger, but this is the heart of the ones who have compassion. Now, what, what's the other kind of life verse on this one? Well, the life scripture for, the com for this compassion gift mm -hmm. is in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. And it says this, am I now trying to win the favor and approval of men or, or of God? Mm. Or am I seeking to please someone? If I were still trying to be popular with men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. Mm -hmm. And this is the life scripture of the compassion gift because compassion gifts are so in tune with others. And so in tune with the suffering of others and how others feel and making people feel better. They, they want to always remember that they're here to serve Christ ultimately. Mm -hmm. And we serve others as we serve Christ, but we're not serving others just for the sake of pleasing others. We're not serving others so others will be pleased with us. Mm -hmm. We're not serving others so that we can curry favor with others. We're not serving others to gain their approval or validation. We're serving others as we serve Christ. Mm -hmm. And just always keeping that in mind that he is the motivation for how I express his compassion to other people. Um, always keeping that in mind, I think that's a great life verse for them. Yeah, excellent. Excellent indeed. So now, uh, just a, a, a real quick recap then, because we now have hit, you know, all seven of these. So keep in mind that the teacher, you know, is, is the head you know, of the, of this, this kind of, you know, body that we're talking about, you know, they're, they're the brains, they're, they're the knowledge, you know, information, you know, uh, getters, the perceivers are the eyes, you know, they, 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 they can kind of, you know, pinpoint, this is where we're going and, and they have, you know, vision, uh, the exhorters again are the mouth. We, we need, we need, you know, that, that mouthpiece. We need those that bring, you know, sunshine, you know, into our lives. Exhorters are ones who have never met a stranger. I mean, they no nobody is a stranger. They, they can talk to anybody. I mean, you put them in any particular situation, they're fine. Other people will go run and hide in the bathroom. Others, no, uh, like an exhorter, they, they love it and they are engaging, you know, people. We need those. The administrator, remember, you know, are, are the neck. The uh, server, you know, winds up being the hands and the feet. The giver is the arms. And then that compassion, that mercy, that kindness, that's the heart. Pumping love through the whole body that all of us, you know, needs. So, again, identify where you are. Spend some time meditating on it. Give attention to those areas of weakness so that you can strengthen those, grow in those, and mature in those. And for those that you are in relationship with where you're married to, you know, a teacher or perceiver like myself, then, you know, that helps me to know how to relate, you know, better to her, you know, and, and vice versa, you know, with her to me, you know, looking at my, my leaders, you know, my, my, my directors and my coordinators and coaches and captains and seeing, you know, their gifts, it helps me to know how to relate, you know, best with them. Listen, it's, it's a, it's a misnomer. You, you can't treat everyone the same because no one is the same. Now, yes, there, there's a, a sense of equality that, that goes across the board, but, but people are different, so you have to talk to some, some people differently than you would others. That, that's not favoritism. That's just understanding the way they are wired, and you are showing them love by trying to communicate in their language. So those things, I hope that's helpful for you. Honey, you got anything left there? Well, I just wanted to I share. I just wanted to share um, for our parents out there, just keeping in mind those precious the precious seed of these gifts that are in your children 
and keeping in mind that our role as parents is to develop um, and nurture our children so that they can grow into these gifts. And understanding some of the qualities of these gifts helps us to understand how to relate to our children. So we're not, um, you know, berating our children because they may have a different way of thinking than we do, or we're not um, receiving the way that they're um, operating or responding to us always in a negative light because they may just be different. And just understanding, you know, that we're we're not squelching what's what's on the inside of them, but we're allowing it to blossom. I think that's one responsibility of parents. And this teaching is really helping us to see where our children are coming from and helping helping us to really help them develop into who God has created them to be. And as we do that really with each other, with our spouses, with our children, with our coworkers, it really helps us to operate harmoniously so that we can all accomplish God's plan for our lives. That's good. Come on, baby. Pray for us here. So, Father, we just thank you for this time that we've had together studying the motivational gifts. We thank you for each and every one of these seven gifts, Lord. And we thank you for the uniqueness, for the importance that we all are and that you've all given us to the body of Christ and to your plan and to your vision. And we pray, Lord God, that each one of us will grow in maturity in our particular gift, Father. Whatever areas, Lord, that we need to address, whatever areas we need to make some adjustments, adjustments in father we just submit to you now and we thank you by the holy spirit for showing us how to grow and how to operate in in a more productive way how to operate in a more harmonious way with the loved ones in our lives lord god we thank you for just pouring out your vision on us pouring out greater sense of of um, recognition of who you've created us to be a greater sense of purpose lord god and we thank you that we all accomplish your purpose for our lives lord god we don't miss it to the left or right and we give you praise for this now in jesus name amen 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 glory to god hallelujah come on somebody out there just lift up your hands and say thank you lord thank you, yeah lord. god hallelujah. is good to us he's helping us to get better and better and better again so we can accomplish more for him just a couple things to remind you of don't forget next wednesday is first wednesday so you want to lock in it's going to be you know via you know online you know again and then after that we're not going to be having any wednesday uh, broadcast until september the, the first wednesday actually for our second Wednesday we have a student night so I want to encourage you you have a middle school high school or even you know kind of young college age you know a student you know in your house or that you know or cousin niece nephew whatever invite them out they can go to IC Eventbrite's uh, uh, IC events dot eventbrite.com and can register to be a part you know of the activity that we have coming up on the second Wednesday in August so don't miss it matter of fact you go to it first and that way you can tell them what all they need to do so they can register going to have a great time and that's going to be every second Wednesday of the month here starting August and then again in September just some things to pour into our students help them to continue to build up you know grow in Christ and have some fun at the same time so it's always very important and then lastly too don't miss out coming up here in just a, a week or so a week and a half we're starting 21 days of prayer so really want to encourage you to be a part of that this is 21 days of prayer not fasting as well if you want to fast you know you can but we really want to hone in on some things for these 21 days so I want to invite you to join us because we'll be back and looking forward to really just kind of kicking off this fall season strong we love you we declare God's best and blessing over your life your marriage your family your business and your church we'll see you soon bye